two, three, fuck it. My darling, I love you, I love you, I love you. Hey you guys, welcome to welcome back to the channel and it's leaving I'm gonna go into a factory. By the way, I hope you guys are having a good day and let's just get started with the video. Okay, so personally when it comes to factoring, I find the whole process is quite easy depending on how quick you are with your brain and mental math. But if not, don't worry, you can always use a calculator. So for the first problem, you have 27x to the fifth power minus 24x to the fourth power. And so you just want to break it down so you don't stress yourself too much if you're new at this. So you start with numbers and the great common factor out of 27 and 24 would probably, not probably, the answer is 3. Because when you divide 3 into 27, it gives you 9. And 3 into 8 into 24 will give you 8. And because you can't simplify 8 and 9 any further because nothing can go into those two other than 1, your greatest common factor between those two would be 3. And I go for your x's and the greatest common factor will be a 4. Because don't forget, um, with exponents, it's different than numbers where you would divide. For exponents, you would have to um, subtract. So it would be x to the 5th minus x to the 4th power. So you have an x to the 1 left over. And then x to the 4th will cancel out because it would be 0. And x to the 0 power would give you 1. So your answer would end up being 3, open parentheses, 9x minus 8, close parentheses. Okay, so for this problem, we have 30 plus 3x to the 5th power. In this um, situation, unlike the first one, we don't have x's in both the first and the second one. So all you can really get the greatest common factor of is the numbers. And what can divide into 30 and 3 would be 3, because 30 divided by 3 would be 10. 3 divided by 3 would be 1, and you can simplify that any further, so your answer would be... 3 parentheses 10 plus x to the 5th power. 20x to the 4th power plus 45x to the 5th power. So what you want to do is figure out your numbers. And the immediate thing that comes to your head should be 5. Because 20 can be divided by 5 and so can 45. 20 divided by 5 will give you 4. 45 divided by 5 will give you 9. And 4 and 9, there's nothing that can go into both of those. So you leave it as it is. So you bring out a 5. And for the x's, x to the 4th is the least. So you bring that out because you can get out of x to the 4th and x to the 5th. So now outside you have 5 and x to the 4th. And on the inside you would have 4 plus 9x. And that's your answer. Okay, so let's do this one. This one's quite easy. So you have 70 minus 7x and... 7 is the greatest common factor, so you bring that out. So then you have 7 parentheses 10 because you have to divide minus x. You can bring out an x because there's no x in 70, so you leave it on the inside, and that's that. 70 negative 72x squared minus 45x. This one's a little bit different because both of them have a negative, so you can bring out the negative. So, so 72 and 45, they're quite big numbers, so you want to start. Honestly, you just want to start from the smallest and work your way up till there's it can't divide it anymore. And so I started with three, then I realized it could be divided more, so I used nine. And so I brought out a negative nine, so then I made my numbers positive. So on the inside, it would be eight and positive five, and those two can be divided anymore. And for the x's, there's the least x is one, so you want x to the one, so just x. And then inside it would be x plus, and there is no x. So then your answer would be... Okay, so from this point forward to the end of the video, I'll put in my scratch book if that's something you're interested in. But um, let me just explain this whole concept to you guys about how to solve these by factoring. So normally you would have a an equation, a quadratic equation that's like, is I think it's a squared plus b squared plus, no, a squared plus bx plus b squared. I don't, don't quote me on that, but I think that's how you format it. So it would be like x squared plus, I don't know, let me say um 12x plus 36. Let's just say that's an imaginary problem. 
and so what you want to do is make up two parentheses those make up two parentheses your x squared will break down into x and x so you multiply those together you should end up with x squared to like give x an equation if you had to so you put x in one parentheses x in the other parentheses and to get your numbers what you have to do is figure out what two numbers can I add up to give me the number in the middle? So in this case, what two numbers can you add up to give me 12x? You can add up 8 plus 4, 6 plus 6, 3 plus 9, 11 plus 1. But you also have to keep in consideration what two numbers you need to multiply to give you 36. That could be 12 times 3 um six times six and out of all those you have to put those two conditions together and see which one satisfies both and that would be six and six because six plus six gives you 12 and six times six gives you 36 and those other options are not common in both of them so like you can't say 12 and 3 because 12 and 3 wouldn't give you 6 it would give you 15 and that's not right and basically just keep that in mind middle what adds up to give you that last number will multiplies and that's it okay so for the first problem we have x squared plus 6x equals 0 so they already um, made the equation equal to 0 for you and I know I just said the formula is usually a squared plus bx plus c or something like that but in this case you don't have a c so your c is 0 because it's not there and you have a bx and that is 6 so remember what i said what adds up to give you the middle number and most will give you the last number in this case the last number is a zero so the only thing that can most will give you a zero is a zero so what adds up to give you six when most will give you zero that would be six and zero because six plus zero is six so the middle number and six times zero is zero so the last number and that's it so you have parentheses, x plus 6, close parentheses, open parentheses, x plus 0, close parentheses, and you set that equal to 0. And then whenever you have parentheses, you always bring it as the opposite. So if you set x plus 6 equal to 0, that'll be negative 6 and 0, x is 0. Okay, so minus 100 equals negative 4x. And so, like I said, you also make sure it's equal to zero so you can solve for x. And so you have to add 4x to both sides. So when you do that, the four, your middle cancels out. And so now, you're ended, now you end up with the first number and the last. So that is x squared minus 100. And if you don't already know, that is a difference of perfect squares. And I have a whole video dedicated to that if you want to check it out. But um, basically for difference perfect squares, it is a squared minus b squared and you have to break that down into a plus b in parentheses a minus b so basically the square root the positive and the negative so you have open parentheses x minus 10 close parentheses and open parentheses x minus 10 i don't know if i said x minus 10 twice but it's x plus 10 and x minus 10 and when you take that out the parentheses to set it equal to zero your answers will be x equals 10 and x equals negative 10. Okay, so for this problem, we have x squared minus 9x minus 12 equals negative 4x minus 6. And so, like I said, you always make sure it's equal to 0. So you have to add 4x and add 6 to both sides. If you add the 4x and negative 9x, you end up with x squared minus 5x. And then negative 12 plus 6 is negative 6. So x squared minus 5x minus 6 equals 0. What adds up to give you negative 5 and most of give you negative 6. There are different, there are a lot of possibilities but to give you negative 5 you would have to say negative 6 and 1 because negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5 and when you multiply that it'll give you a negative 6 there's this rule um that helps it easier for you to figure out if it's going to be two negatives one negative both positive and i'll try to find it and put it on the screen for you guys so you guys can use that and just kind of like make your life easier with the whole negative stuff because it can get tricky or whatever and so when you end up with x minus 6 parentheses x plus 1, you take that out and set it equal to 0. So x minus 6 equals to 0 is x equals 6 and x plus 1 equals 0 is x minus 1. x equals negative 1. And those are your answers.
Okay, so this is another problem where you don't have a um a last number, you only have the middle. So you have x squared plus 4x plus 5 equals negative 6x plus 5. You add 6x and subtract 5 from both sides, and you end up at x squared plus 10x equals 0. And so you have a middle, so you're thinking to yourself, what can I what two numbers multiply to give me 0 by asking give me 10? Normally, honestly, I feel like the answer is always going to be the same thing. It's just going to be the number in zero because you always are going to need zero because you're going to need zero to multiply by the number and then you're just going to add it. So it's just going to always be the number in the equation. So in this case, that is parentheses x and parentheses x plus 10. And so you said the x equals zero and that's x equals zero. And then you said the x plus 10 equals 0, and that's x equals negative 10. So when, so let's say your answer is x equals 0 and negative 10. Or it's x equals 0 or negative 10. Okay, so we're going to be using a picture, and I'm just going to reference it to kind of show you guys how the signs work and stuff, because um, in case anybody's confused. So you have x squared plus 6x equals x plus 50. Again, you probably already know the drill by now. Subtract x and subtract 50 from both sides. You end up with x squared plus 5x minus 50 equals 0. And now you have the quadratic equation. And so your you have a positive and a negative. So your for your final one of the parentheses, for the two parentheses, is going to be negative for the smaller number and a positive for the larger number. Okay, so let's solve it. One most wise give me negative 15 as give me 5. It's going to be 10 and negative 5. Because 10 minus 5 is 5. 10 times negative 5 is negative 15. And so you just put in your... If you didn't know your signs, then you just knew like, okay, it's probably going to be 10 and 5. You feel me? So now you're going to put the signs. So the small number out of 10 and 5 is 5. So that's a negative. So x minus 5. And the larger number is 10. So x plus 10. And when you solve, it should be x equals negative 10 or 5. And that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something new. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.